Cut a man in half at the collarbones. It's a kind of tips for collectors. Uh, illegal to keep it here. Hello everybody, this is War Story Video Blog. I am Alex and here we are uh, in New Jersey. This is a small but really interesting show. I don't want to tell uh, where is it, but it's in um, Union. So, uh, this show is really interesting and uh, many people and many collectors uh, came here to show their material, to sell their material. Also, some guys uh, came here to buy something and some guys came here to show items and that's like not for sale, yeah? Not for sale, yeah. Yes. And here is George. Hey, George. Um, nice to see you nice here. Nice to see you, my friend. Nice to meet you. And um, you have really nice item. I was surprised it's not for sale, but uh, could you tell us about uh, this sword and the story? No problem, no problem. So this sword, I was able to pick it up off of an auction on eBay. And uh, this sword was Smith in the 1600s, the 1660s, Kanbun era was called, by a Smith that signed Yamato no Kami Minamoto Kanenobu Saku. He was, I would say, an average smith. He wasn't extremely highly rated from what I was told. I don't know much about the smith as I'm still studying myself. I'm very new to this. But the sword is in very good polish and it's got a very long nagasa. It's about 73.1 centimeters, 73 centimeters. It's very long. Um, and 200, roughly 200 years after the sword was made, in 1844, a man by the name of Kamiya Genji, a test cutter during the late or mid Edo period, cut a man in half at the collarbones with the sword and into the mound below. And supposedly, the cutting test was ordered by a man by the name of Suzuki Mitsunori. Mm -hmm. I can't find any information on this man, but I want to send this to Japan to get papered as nobody wants to buy a sword with this kind of provenance with no certificate or paperwork. Um, stuff like this doesn't usually pop up and the fact that this sword went to World War II as a Shin Gunto was very, very honestly shocking to me. Yeah. I don't know who would put this in, in service. Yeah, and sometimes when like uh, lost kids uh, went to war and sometimes uh, like family members uh, gave s traditional swords yep. as a talisman. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So my guess is they gave this to their son for good luck in battle. Yeah. And what's interesting is this total Kusho paper here yeah. says that this came out of Japan yeah. and it was never papered. Mm -hmm. Now, if these swords are in Japan, it's a lot cheaper to get papered. Now, yeah. why it got papered, I'm not sure. But my best guess is that they didn't want this sword ending up in American hands. So I'm guessing they hid this sword and then it came into auction long time after and now it's in my hands. Yeah. Um, stuff like this usually doesn't pop up. Uh, the signature is beautiful, the, the tang is untouched, and the sword is absolutely tremendous. Sanbon Sugi Hamon, if you want to take a couple videos on oh, it. Oh yeah. Yeah, this one is really cool, and Hamon is uh, really like wavy. How they to call say? it a Sanbon Sugi Hamon, yeah. yeah it, it starts off very small in the beginning, mm -hmm. and as you go towards the Kisaki, it gets more, you know, how would you say, vibrant, yeah. more showy, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it turns into this very beautiful boshi that's still present. Yeah. Very nice sword. And actually condition is really good. Absolutely, yeah. I bought, uh, one year ago, I bought a collection. It was more than 200 blades. Wow. Yes, and I uh, still working with, uh, with it. Uh, I already sold it to my customer, but uh, I don't want to just send it and that's it. I want to like study. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, actually, are you from New Jersey? Yes, sir. Oh, I have to contact you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because it's this collection um, from guy who based, uh, who focused on uh, German daggers mostly, and uh, all Japanese stuff he just put aside. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after like 40 or 50 years, um, he decided to sell it, and I bought it. So, um, and some items are really nice, and uh, I, I still try to find 
uh, like translation of uh, characters and all stuff. Probably you can uh, help. Yeah? No, I can't. Yeah. How, Japanese. How did, is, how, how, how did you get translation? I ask people in Facebook group chats and, and people who know this stuff. Yeah. So I'm I, 21 years old. I've uh, been doing this maybe three years. I, and I will Japanese ask you about very, this uh, this Facebook group. I absolutely would love to show you. Yeah. It's very but helpful. Cool. Very helpful. Yeah. Very very nice guys in there. Yeah. And it's tremendous. It's it's incredible. It's incredible learning tool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's cool. So this uh, sword is really nice, yeah. really nice. Thank yeah, you, thank you, thank you, th thank you for sharing this Absolutely. story. And can you show us uh, like your other stuff and um, tell something about no problem, uh, all no these problem. items? Because it's every time interesting to hear collector who bought it. <laughs> Start off with the one on the end here. This one is my most recent buy. This is a Gunto made during the Second World War by a very highly, very highly renowned smith by the name of Ichihara Ichiryushi Nagamitsu. He made high grade, medium to high grade Gendaito and a lot of his stuff is very sought after. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very close to the tradition. Um, obviously they had modern methods because they had to make these for war. But uh, these are high grade Gendaito, very sought after. And it's got a very nice Fugu Hahamo with a little bit of Midara in there. And it's in pretty good polish for being a wartime sword. Yeah. This was used during the war. This was in the field. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Usually these uh, these get bought up by collectors and they stay in collections because they're so nice. A lot, cool. lot of high-grade Gendaito stuff will probably disappear over the years. And I like the curve. Yep, it's very deep sorty and uh, I like it a lot. Very nice piece. Yeah. Very nice piece. That's true. Other sword has a um, field cover. Yeah, so this one has a combat cover in leather. These are usually up to the soldier's preference, I think, if they want it or not. And it uh, looks like this, this soldier went with it. Mm -hmm. This uh, sword is signed Soshuju Akihiro, one of the most famous makers in Japanese sword making history. Uh, but the signature is not real. Uh, it's too good to be true, but the sword is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was definitely passed down from generation and obviously given to a, a soldier for good luck and good fortune. Oh, it's silver habaki? Yeah, silver foil habaki. Um, very slender sword. It's not It's not heavy, it's very balanced, and it's very thin. Mm -hmm. the, the hamon is very, very violent and, and turbulent, vertical rising tobiyaki. It's mm -hmm. stuff I usually don't see. Uh, this, this signature is supposed to be from Nanboku Cho, mm -hmm. like, 1300, like 1300s. Something like that. So um, this hamon is like very, very interesting because it comes off of the main tempering and it's almost like a Hitatsura, but not exactly. Mm -hmm. Hitatsura would be like a, a full temper throughout the whole blade. Mm -hmm. But this is more like a, a vertical tobiyaki is there's no, there's no hamon on the, on the shinogi or the mune whatsoever. Yeah. And uh, probably Shin Shinto uh, or Shinto sword it was made much later than Nanboku Cho. Mm -hmm. um, false signature. I'm not sure when it was put on the sword, but it's still very beautiful. Yeah. Very beautiful. It's, it's really nice. And I like Tsuba, because it's, it's Suba, uh, uh, yes. al al also white metal. So I have no idea why it was made like that. Yeah. I don't know what the meaning is behind Probably it. Probably our subscribers can tell Maybe. us, because some, I would love for them some to really famous out. collectors also watch us. Absolutely. But uh, I paid attention on it. Like, uh, I, would love to, I would love to find out, because I don't know, personally. Okay. Personally, I don't know. But actually, it's like kind of, um, I don't know, not a life hack, but uh, it's a kind of tips for collectors. If you see um, silver foiled habaki, yep. or if you see like nice two pieces, blade. yes, or if you have two pieces habaki, it uh, could be nicer blade, yeah. And uh, another one is also Singunto. And, uh, so see. this Shingunto is a little bit different than the others because this one was made during the Second World War, but it's a Showato. Showato refers to non-traditionally made swords out of modern steel that are oil quenched. Uh, they could be handmade, but they're modern steel and they're oil quenched. Therefore, they're showato and not traditional. Showato will not be received in Japan for polishing. If you find somebody to polish, you'll be lucky. And they do not get papers. This specific Shingunto is in very good condition, especially the mounts. Uh, there's no major dents, no scratches, and everything's tight to the sword. Everything is matching. The sword has a san, like a sort of like a Sanbon Sugi Hamon, mm -hmm. some Midare in there and with some nice boshi. But the tang is what's special. There's a hot stamp on the tang. 
Um, Kanezane used like a turtle hot stamp. It's like a god turtle. I'm not exactly sure. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. I'm still looking into it, but I know that uh, it's like a symbol for something in Japan and mm -hmm. he would stamp it on the bottom of his tanks. And um, a lot of these are very hard to find. You might find his swords with a signature, but no hot stamp. Yeah. And uh, actually, I will, I'll take the, the, the handle off. I'll show you what a hot stamp is. So that is a two character signature for the smith Kanezane, Asano Kanezane. Now, what's special about the sword is yeah, he made a lot of shawato, but it has a hot stamp. Now, that's a turtle. Now, a lot of these people don't want to get rid of, even though they're shawato, they're not really considered to be traditional art. But um, these are very rare, very rare hot stamp. Very interesting. That's cool, yes. I actually never seen... Uh, yeah, very hard to find these, mm -hmm. very hard. And Asano Kanezane was like a decently rated smith during the Second World mm -hmm. War. Interesting. Here I have something from Meiji Restoration, when the country was completely changing. Mm -hmm. When samurai order was going out yeah. and centralized government was coming in. This is when they wanted to reform the whole country mm -hmm. and become a centralized government. So a, a world power, basically. Yeah. And during that time, samurai were no longer allowed to carry swords. It was illegal. It was banned. Mm -hmm. So to keep yourself safe, you would carry a sword that was designed like a cane mm -hmm. or like a walking stick. Yeah. And this one was made for a child, which is actually very special. And typically, I would imagine children like to mess with their toys. Oh, yeah. But this one is in very good condition. It's very short, roughly 40, 43 centimeters. And it's traditional steel, tamahagane. The it's point, nicely done. Yeah, it's very nicely done. Uh, I don't see stuff like this, especially in the size. Usually they're longer mm -hmm. or like a traditional wakizashi and like a stick koshirai. And um, oh, very nice, very nice. Usually you don't see stuff like this. Yeah, it's really good. Can I see it? Okay. And I like this hook, special hook yeah. Yeah, for luck. I, I'm not exactly. This has been the same condition since Meiji period. Uh -huh. And it's interesting, this piece also has Nakugeana like a regular sword. You want me to take it out? Huh? You want me to take it out? Uh, I think that's okay, but. Is a character is there? No, uh, unfortunate. Yeah, but it's interesting. Also, there it is a uh, there is a hamon here. Yeah, hamon <laughs> and hada. It has boshi. Yeah, Very nice. Wow, yeah. that's what kind of price for this item? I, I uh, I've never played. I'm asking twenty five hundred, but yeah. it could be overpriced. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it could be overpriced. I just don't know because this is the first thing I've had like it. Mm -hmm. I don't but know. This Somebody's one is, got to educate me on the price. Yes, but this one is in really nice condition. I want 25 for it, yeah. And really nicely done. I've never seen with Hamon. Usually it's like just a piece of steel. That's what I said. Beautiful. And this polish mm -hmm. was the original polish yeah. since the 1800s. That's cool. And spine of blade it's also. Kind of yeah. yeah. That's nice. We have to show it closer. Absolutely, absolutely. That's nice, cool. Oh, this is something nice. Yes, this is very nice. Yeah. This was made supposedly by a smith in the Tenna era, 1681 to mm -hmm. 1684. Very short period of time. Yeah. He wasn't a very prolific smith, didn't make much stuff, but um, he was an okay smith. Mm -hmm. uh, this sword is a wakizashi. It's a short sword, but it's long for its for its classification for a wakizashi. And it's built almost as if it's a katana or a tachi. It's very large and it's very deeply curved. Um, and the signature, I'm not sure if it's real. There's no real paperwork with it. But one thing that's very interesting with the sword is it has this called a Torokusho paper. Mm -hmm. Now every sword should come out of Japan with one, but this is the original one. Mm -hmm. These are illegal to ship out of Japan. No. These are not allowed to leave Japan. Mm -hmm. So if so you, if you send one, it, if you, they'll take it. Yeah, okay. So if I send this, I'm gonna keep it here, mm -hmm. if I send the sword. But usually you get a photocopy, something like this paper, yeah. right? And uh, 
very rare, very rare yeah. that you have this. And to clarify, it's not uh, illegal to keep it here, yes. it's just illegal to... I bought it legally, it but whoever sent yeah. it out at first, initially, definitely didn't do the entire process that they should yeah. have. So if you ever come across somebody selling a whole bunch of swords with original Torakusho, something is something strange. I'm surprised yeah. I got this one. Yeah, man, that's cool, yeah. that's cool. And um, I want to remind also that all this uh, Japanese stuff, uh, most of uh, Japanese stuff here in the United States, this is the items that American veterans brought back to the United States after uh, World War II, because uh, all these items uh, has been captured and uh, brought back as a trophy. Uh, the same stuff, uh, the same uh, story behind German stuff, behind German items, German daggers and uh, uh, flags and other uh, pieces. And some people want to say that all these items has been stolen uh, by veterans, by Soviet veterans, by uh, American veterans uh, after war between our countries and Japan ended. Uh, but to be honest with you, they just rescued uh, all this stuff because uh, you see these pictures and uh, I already filmed interview, you, you see this photo album when um, soldiers had to destroy all this stuff and uh, those guys who brought it back to the United States for example they just rescue all these uh, items and that's cool it's incredible and uh, those guys who say that uh, tr war trophies uh, it's just a stolen items they just see it you know like on the surface <laughs> not deep if he if, if, war, if soldiers never brought these back america wouldn't really know about them so i glad you enjoyed this video i glad you enjoy this show this show is almost finished and uh, i'm happy to see you here and it was nice it's nice to meet you guys thank, thank you. you so show is almost finished i will try to find something else uh, it, it uh, calls last call deals and thank you guys for watching this video until the end thank you for let me know your opinion about this stuff and about videos and uh, have a good one and see you real soon